Today we're reading from today's book, Celtic Tales and Legends, and it's illustrated by Cathy Shuttleworth, with kind permission from Armadillo Publishing. So let's get started. Today we're going to read The Field of Gold. One sunny day, at harvest time, a lad was walking along a lane when he heard a strange tapping sound. He was surprised and peered into the hedge to see what it was. Well, the cause of the sound was even more surprising. Among the roots of the hedge sat a very tiny old man wearing a leather apron. He was hammering away at the heel of a little shoe, but every now and then he stood up on tiptoe on his stool and drew himself a drink from a large brown barrel, half hidden by the leaves. I've heard of leprechauns, the lad said to himself, but I never really believed in them until today. If this one will lead me to his gold, I need never work again. I mustn't let him out of my sight. Then the lad greeted the leprechaun as politely as he could, and the little old man nodded in a friendly way. I wonder if you'd be good enough to tell me what you're drinking, asked the lad. It's beer, said the leprechaun, and very fine beer too. I'm sure it is, replied the lad, for the sun was making him thirsty. Where did you find it? Find it? I made it, cried the, the shoemaker. I made it from the purple heather. The lad began to laugh. You can't expect me to believe that, he roared. But still, he did not want to taste. The, he did want to taste the beer and said as much to the little man. But the leprechaun looked severely at the young man and shook his head. You'd be better off minding your own business and bothering me, he said. While you've been wasting time here, the cows have got into your father's wheat field and are trampling it all down. The lad was just about to rush off to the wheat field when he remembered that this chance might not come along his way again. He plunged into the hedge and grabbed the leprechaun, knocking over the beer as he did so. Now, of course, there was no chance of a drink, and that made the young man even angrier. He shook the little old man in his fist and yelled, if you don't show me where your gold is hidden, you won't live another minute. It's only a couple of fields away, squeaked the little old man. I'll show you. So, with the lad holding fast to the leprechaun and never taking his eyes off him, for a second, the strange pair made their way over hedges and ditches until they came to a great field of gold, golden ragwort. The leprechaun pointed to a particularly large and fine plant. This is where it is, he said. If you dig under there, you'll find a pot of full of golden coins. The lad was so delighted to hear this that it was a moment before he realised he did not have a spade with him. He would have to run home to fetch one. He pulled off his red neckerchief and tied it around the plant in question so that he would be able to find it again. But he was still suspicious. Promise me you won't untie the neckerchief he said as fiercely as he could to the leprechaun. The little man looked him straight in the eye and promised not to touch it. Will that be all then, he grinned. The lad, felt, the lad felt sure he had covered everything. It will, he said. I've no more need of you. Goodbye and good luck. And he set the little man down on the ground. The leprechaun ran off at once. The young man could only hear just his last words. Good luck to you, my lad, in your field of gold. And much good may it do you. The foolish lad ran home as fast as he could and returned panting with his trusty spade. It was only minutes since he had said goodbye to the leprechaun. He is still very much too late. Standing golden in the sun were thousands and thousands of ragwort plants and every one of them had a red neckerchief tied around it. The lad walked slowly home, shaking his head. He had missed out on the beer. He had missed out on the gold, and he had missed his chance altogether, and the language he used about the leprechaun was hardly fit to hear. Uh -uh.